Welcome back. As we continue to celebrate Black History Month, we are pleased to have with us today two young and dynamic hockey players who are making history in women's hockey. Our guests today, Soroya Tinker and Michaela Grant Mantis, who are both professional ice hockey players with the Toronto Six of the Premier and the Premier Hockey Federation. We'd like to welcome both of them to the show. Welcome, ladies. Yeah, thank Hi, you so much for having us. We're delighted to have you both, and you both have made history in hockey, especially as black women. But I, how, let's talk about how did your journey start in the world of sports? Soroya? Yeah, so my dad grew up in Scarborough, Ontario. My dad's black, my mom's white. And my dad grew up really loving hockey and loving uh, Scarborough and all that it had to offer in terms of its hockey community. Um, my dad, unfortunately, experienced quite a bit of racism in the sport, uh, but it made him want, to, his, his, want him to put his kids in it and prove people wrong. So that's how I got into hockey. Michaela? Uh, yeah, similar story for me. My dad played ball hockey. Um, he wasn't really a good skater, so he wanted his kids to play ice hockey. So he put my, my two brothers in first, and then finally I was able to convince him to put me in um, a little later after them. Good for you. Good for you. Sorry, I want to stay with you because you were the first black player to ever play on Yale's hockey team. And today you are a part of a team with diverse players, diverse coaching staff as well. <clears throat> so how much have things changed when it comes to representation and diversity in women's hockey? Yeah, I definitely think that we're moving in the right direction. I think we haven't seen as much participation as we have hoped to see. But I think that the representation can be continued throughout all areas of sport and hockey. It doesn't just have to be players. It can be referees or coaches like we have currently with the Toronto Six with Mark Jocelyn and Angela James coaching us. Um, so in that sense, I think we need to see that representation piece. And I've seen it move along. And obviously now here playing with, with another black player, Michaela, and playing for two black coaches. So, um, yeah, we're seeing improvements, but there's still a long way to go. Soraya, you mentioned uh, that your father experienced racism in hockey, and there have been allegations of racism in hockey for years. Uh, many argue that there really hasn't been any meaningful change. Um, so, uh, Michaela, why do you think that hockey in particular seems prone to this? And what do you think needs to be done? Yeah, you know, I think hockey is generally thought of as a, a more of a white person sport, so people of color try to stay away from it. And when they're brought into it, um, they're seen as a threat sometimes. But I think we are making the right strides to make it better and hopefully um, educate and empower people to play the sport and learn how, you know, how we feel coming into the sport. And hopefully um, we can get better over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can see it, you can be it for sure. Well, Soroya, um, you shared before that your uh, first encounter with racism was at the age of 12. Uh, while you were with your teammates in your dressing room. Can you tell us about that? And going forward, um, how did you navigate sports as a black woman? Yeah, so, I mean, I think a lot of examples of racism in, in hockey uh, come across as covert. They're not overt examples of racism, so they're not easily um, identifiable uh, for, for a lot of the public. But at the same time, my first instance with overt racism was when I was 12, playing uh, where I was called the N-word by my own teammate. And at that point, I mean, I think it led for me to feel very angry and misplaced in my sport. I didn't feel like I could connect with my teammates the way that I had hoped. Um, and it was definitely a challenge. But at the same time, I think it's been used to fuel the fire. And I think my dad always said to let their comments go in one ear and out the other and just to prove people wrong. So in that sense, I think that we are continuing to prove people wrong. And it's really only led me to where I am today. So all of the adversity I faced is the reason I'm the player I am today. Mm. Um, I, I'm somebody who has said on the show a number of times that I find gendered sports somewhat troubling. Uh, like the professional women's teams automatically aren't going to make the same kind of money as the men's team, despite the fact that like the Olympics is a perfect example. People love watching women in sport. So, Michaela, how do you recognize, reconcile that blatant inequity? And I mean, I have a follow up question I'll just throw in there. As more and more trans and gender nonconforming people begin to enter the sports realm, do you see a time when gender is less meaningful in sports? Yeah, and I think we're moving in the right direction. You know, it starts in the real world. Um, women were making less than men their entire lives, they're considered to be an at-home mother kind of job. So as the generations go on, I think we are getting there where we are um, close into 
equal pay, but you know, there's still a lot of steps to move forward. And even in the hockey world and any other sport, women technically make less. Um, but I do see it changing, especially with the, with people that are transgender or um, non-gender, they are also making changes so that they also feel included and are welcome to the sport. And a big part of success in sport is mentorship. And Soroya, you started Soroya Strong as a mentorship program. Tell us what it is all about and what prompted you to start this initiative to give back. Yeah, so as I previously mentioned, I didn't really have a lot of friends on my team. I didn't feel as though I could connect with them. And come my senior year at Yale, I played with another player. She came in as a freshman. Um, Kirsten Good came in as another black player. And right off the bat, she was a little sister to me. And I realized how important it was for me to be there for her and show her the ropes and for us to stick up for each other. Um, and with that, I decided to start my mentorship program just because I do see so many little black girls loving the game of hockey all around. And with that, we run Zoom workouts, have guest speakers. We do a lot of community events now in person now that COVID's wrapping up. Um, but yeah, it's really just a big community of black women that love ice hockey. Mm -hmm. So, Michaela, you became the most decorated player in a single PHF season. You earned a record four accolades, including the first black player in league history to win the Most Valuable Player and Newcomer of the Year Award. I mean, that is a lot. So what does it mean to you, especially as a black female athlete? Uh, yeah, it means a lot. Um, there's so much great talent in the league, and for me to win all those awards were kind of crazy. Um, you know, I kind of just do it for the the people in the league or the younger girls that look up to me and Tinker as um, as players and as role models. And, you know, it was huge for me to win those awards to show them that they can do it. They can be just like me or Tinks or they can be like AJ and um, Mark as our coach. There's so many options for people in this sport. And, you know, it's good to just give them someone to look up to. You know, I think you're you're very likely inspiring a lot of little girls that are watching right now. So I wanted to ask each of you what advice you would give to young girls who really want to break into um, ho ice hockey and perhaps even pursuing it professionally. So Roy, I'll start with you. Yeah, I, throughout my career, I always felt like I had to put aside a piece of my blackness to fit in and, you know, thrive in the hockey community. But along the lines, uh, along my journey, I've realized that it's best to just be unapologetically yourself and that that's when you're gonna feel the most included and, and that's when people are gonna respect you the most. So I would tell the girls to continue to play and be unapologetically themselves. Michaela? Yeah, I would just say basically the same thing, you know, just follow your dreams. Um, when I was younger, I didn't really get picked for any like special team on Ontario or Team Canada or anything. And I still managed to make it this far in my career. So. Um, just keep living out your dream. And if you aspire to play pro hockey, just work as hard as you can to, to get there. Thank you so much, Soraya and Michaela, for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for having yeah, us. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> We can't wait to see and watch your careers just soar. And for everyone watching, we'll be right back after this.